Hey everyone, Nick here. Today we're talking about this little jerk of a bug and why it could end up killing the citrus industry and what scientists are doing to stop that from happening. Today's video is brought to you by Aberhart Egg Solutions. It must suck to be a fruit in the grocery store that doesn't get bought and just ends up getting thrown away. But what if it could live another life recycled as an environmentally friendly macronutrient fertilizer and participate once again in the circle of life? Well, my good friends at Aberhart Ag Solutions are giving food waste a second chance at life with BioSol Premium Plus, a compost amended sulfur source by BioCycle Solutions. This fertilizer saves farmers money, improves logistics, and is agronomically superior, all while diverting material that would normally end up in the landfill. Make sure to check out Aberhart Ag Solutions for more info. All right, back to this little jerk of a bug, the villain of this story. This little guy is known as an Asian citrus psyllid. Basically, it's the grim reaper for orange groves. Yes, this tiny little thing has already halved production of citrus in Florida. And in order to find out why, I visited a lab at the University of Florida where I met the citrus psyllid's arch nemesis, Dr. Manjul Dutt. I'm a research assistant scientist at the University of Florida's Citrus Research and Education Center. Cool. And we work with genetic modification of citrus and we have a number of objectives. One of our objectives is to produce genetically modified citrus that can resist um, a bacterial disease called a swang longbing, mm. which is devastating the citrus industry here. So that's citrus greening as we know it. Absolutely. Loving that name. Not loving the fallout so much though. Worst of which is that this disease causes defoliation of a citrus tree. Defoliation equals no leaves. Not to mention the fruit of these infected trees will be weirdly shaped and be bitter tasting with odd peels that stay green at the bottom, hence the North American name, citrus greening. Doesn't sound as exciting as yellow dragon disease, but the consequences are the same, dead trees. Also worth noting is that once a tree is infected with this disease, there is no cure. The only thing to do is to take out trees once they are infected and be damn careful when you move from an infected field to a non-infected field. Actually, when we were in Florida, we had to be pretty darn careful moving around because we were filming infected trees and could have easily helped spread the disease if we weren't paying attention. Nobody wants to be a disease vector after all. Another thing really helping this disease spread is... Monoculture. We have you know hundreds of thousands of acres under um, one or a few varieties of sweet oranges. And so there is not much genetic diversity in the citrus population. So when you have a specific infection or a disease attack a particular cultivar, you end up getting, you know, a large tract of, you know, of these trees getting infected. Monoculture, like every choice, has its pros and its cons. Pro, when we find a kind of citrus fruit we like, we know there will be plenty of it grown. Con, when a disease finds a kind of citrus fruit it really likes, there's plenty of it grown. In dollars and cents terms, the problem is even more stark. Another member of this Florida lab characterized it like this. It's a $10 billion a year industry. And when, at our peak production, we were producing about 220, 225 million boxes of fruit uh, per year. And about 90% of that goes to, to processing. This is just Florida. Mm. So right now, uh, this year, we're teetering right around 100 million boxes. So it's about half of what our, our maximum was. Now that clip was from two years ago. Guess how many boxes of fruit the Florida citrus industry produced this year? 77 million. Florida is losing this battle, but it may yet win the war, thanks to the science Manjul and his team are applying to the problem. This is a genetically modified Hamlin sweet orange. And we engineered this using a process called as mature transformation. And this has been genetically engineered to express an antimicrobial peptide gene called SEMA. And what does that entail exactly? The, the, the SEMA is, is a small um, lytic peptide. It's a small protein yeah. that, you know, in layman's terms, can punch holes into the bacterial membrane. Okay. And so the bacterial membrane opens up, the internal components just leak out, and the bacteria dies. So we're talking about a bacteria that has a serious impact on the orange. Absolutely. Right. Right. And uh, I got to tell you guys, this looks like a pretty normal orange to me. Nothing too sinister about it at this point. So, uh, so tell me. Yeah, no problem. Get a little. Get a little. You want me to rotate a little there? Just a little Vanna White here. Ooh. Ah. Okay. It's hard to make a scientist laugh, 
Okay, so the orange is modified to release a peptide protein that punches holes in the bacteria that the citrusillid bug infected the citrus tree with. How was that accomplished? For this, we used what we call the agrobacteria mediated transformation process. So we have a gene that we clone into a plasmid DNA, mm -hmm. and that's inserted into agrobacterium. Now, agrobacterium is a common soil bacteria. Oh, and we've talked about it lots before, agrobacteria. It's nature's sneaky little DNA courier. They've evolved to specialize in putting their own DNA into other organisms. You eat their work every Thanksgiving when you have sweet potatoes, which are naturally modified using the same mechanisms Manjul is using on these oranges. What happens is the acrobacterium infects the plant cells and inserts a portion of its DNA that we can modify called the tDNA. Mm. And that piece of the DNA called the tDNA is subsequently inserted into the citrus this is host DNA. Mm. It's like when your girlfriend moves in with you and brings all her stuff. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, you just put in along with your stuff, you know. Oh, I'm starting to win them over. So bringing this all together, we've got a devastating plant disease that is spreading and has no cure. We've got a solution in engineered fruit that cure. We've got a solution in the first place. And we've got a whole public perception problem because the solution to this problem is GMO. As with many GMO crops, the best solution to a problem is also the least popular solution. The citrus industry is stuck between a rock and a hard place. If Florida's citrus industry is still functioning in five or 10 years, it will owe that success to the work Manjul is doing, and that makes him happy. It makes us very excited that what we're doing is actually working, you know. I mean, you can do a lot of experiments and you can have results in the laboratory, but this is a field situation, a field plot in which you can actually get the perfect feedback as to whether your plants are, the plants that you have generated are actually working or not. So this gives me immense satisfaction to see that some of these um, transgenic lines containing one of our genes is actually f working against um, citrus greening. So next time you enjoy a glass of orange juice or eat a grapefruit or nosh on a lime after a shot of tequila, think about the scientists fighting to keep those citrus crops available to you. Well, I'm Nick Syke, and I'd like to thank Aberhart Egg Solutions for sponsoring the video today. I think Biosol is just such a cool product. Not only if you're a farmer looking for a stable and affordable source of sulfur, but just as a general idea, Biosol Premium Plus fertilizes new food with wasted food. We're talking about elemental sulfur, which they get as waste from the oil and gas industry, being mixed with compost made from food that a grocery store was just about to throw out. It's kind of the ultimate form of recycling, and I just love the idea. Visit aberhartagsolutions.ca to find out more. If you're watching this video on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure to follow our page, and if you're watching on Twitter, click through to YouTube and subscribe to our channel, okay? Thanks.